is lecture number one, Cultures of the Mountains and the Sea. The ancient Greeks are often given credit for having given Western civilization the seeds of their culture. In other words, we're all a little Greek, yo. Greece was not one big nation during ancient times, rather was a collection of city-states with their roots in Minoan civilization on the island of Crete. The Greeks also traced their roots to the Indo-European plains near the Black Sea, as well as in Anatolia, or near what we now call Turkey. Greece is located in the Mediterranean, along the Ionian and Aegean seas. Life was therefore heavily influenced by the sea, with many Greeks who were skilled sailors. They depended on sea trade to get the things they didn't have, like timber, precious metals, and farmland. Now, Greece is fairly mountainous, covering three-quarters of the land, so it makes sense that different communities and city-states with very different ways of life developed. This is yet another example of how geography can influence how a specific culture's de culture develops. With few roads and difficult terrain to cross, mountainous regions tend to stay isolated. Additionally, Greece has never been able to extensively farm and support a large population over time due to the terrain. Because if you're always worried about where your next meal is coming from, you're not going to be concerning yourselves with things like pottery or other forms of art. Some people think this is why they get, tried to gain territory elsewhere. However, Greece also has a fairly pleasant climate with mild winters and warm summers allowing for many outdoor activities. So who were the first Greeks? Well, most people think that the earliest Greeks were from Indo-European tribes who migrated from steppes. Most people agree that the earliest Greeks were the Mycenaeans and the Dorians. Some of these people were the Mycenaeans, who originated in the fortified city that we call Mycenae. The fact that they heavily fortified their city tells us that they felt the need to defend themselves from invaders and probably had some sort of army or navy, unlike the Minoans, remember? They didn't really have fortified cities on Crete, which some believe may have contributed to their eventual downfall. The Mycenaeans were ruled by kings in their individual communities. We know that the Mycenaeans had contact with the Minoans at some point, probably while trading, because if you recall, the Minoans were located on the island of Crete. It appears that the Mycenaeans adopted many things from the Minoans, including their writing system, artwork, vases or vases, politics, as well as literature. When we talk about the roots of Western civilization, we're really talking about the Minoan and Mycenaean cultures. Ever hear about Trojan horses? Delivery! <laughs> yeah. Well, this was the Mycenaeans. They fought a 10-year war against a city in Anatolia, or Turkey, called Troy. Supposedly, according to legend, this was because a Trojan king had kidnapped Helen, the wife of a Greek king. In order to get into the heavily fortified city of Troy, the Mycenaeans supposedly built a large wooden horse, which they hid inside, and then were transported into Troy by the Trojans themselves. We're still not sure if this is historically accurate, However, modern excavations have suggested that there is at least some truth to these battle campaigns. The other early Greek civilization included the Dorians. After the Mycenaean civilization collapsed, it's believed that the Dorians took over. The Dorians were considered to be far less advanced than the Mycenaeans had been. In fact, they stopped using the written Greek language, and we don't know a great deal about them because of this lack of written history. However, many of their stories were passed down from generation to generation in the form of stories. The most famous of these was perhaps Homer, who created an epic, also known as a narrative poem, called the Iliad. The Trojan War served as a backdrop for the story, and it includes heroes like Achilles, battle scenes, and a love story. It reflects the ancient Greek beliefs um, in arity, which means virtue and excellence. The ancient Greeks were also known for their myths. This is perhaps what most of you are familiar with from English class or from sixth grade. Greek mythology. A Greek, uh, well, Greek myths are traditional stories about their gods. Through these myths, the Greeks attempted to make sense of their world and their lives, like the changing seasons, harvests, and human passions. All human qualities were attributed to gods who competed with one another. These included Zeus, ruler of the gods, Hera, Zeus's wife, Athena, goddess of wisdom, and Zeus's daughter. 
Finally, here's what you need to remember for your regent's exam. There are many mountains and islands that prevented the Greeks from creating a huge empire like Egypt or Mesopotamia. Instead, they created small city-states. Also remember that the Mediterranean and Aegean seas will help the Greeks trade and come into contact with other cultures. And a great example of this would be the influence of the Phoenician alphabet on the Greek alphabet. Generally speaking, the Minoans, Mycenaeans, and Dorians influenced Greek early, uh, or early Greek culture, and their literature was also influenced by their mythology, poets like Homer. So we're all a little Greek, yo. Peace out. Thank you.